Welcome everyone. So, in the last few lectures we have been discussing a phenomenon that we called the dual effect, the dual effect in stochastic control problems. Uh, the premise of uh, behind this phenomenon was that typically a, a, uh, the control action that uh, one takes has primary has just one primary role which is to minimize the cost. The, uh, the, so, therefore, the policy the dependence of the policy is prime is only in the cost function of the of the problem or the loss function of the problem it it does not affect any other aspect of the problem. However, what we saw in Witzenhausen's problem is that the policy chosen at any time step can also have an effect not only on the cost of the problem because, uh, because of the action that control action being present in the cost, but also on the information available to the later acting controllers. So, the later acting controllers their information uh, is depends on the policy and therefore, the policy chosen at later stages is a function of the policy that is chosen in the earlier stages. So, this policy dependence is what uh, uh, is known as the dual effect. So, if you recall we, uh, we had we said this we say that there is a dual effect uh, in the problem if the information of, of u 2 depends on the policy gamma 1 that means the policy of that the first controller chooses depends uh, influences the information that is available to the second controller. This is what we call the dual effect in a problem. Now, uh, one thing I want you to uh, uh, want to emphasize today was that the dual effect is not only is is something uh, that is not just present in uh, in in you know in esoteric information structures like uh, the non-classical information structures. It is also present in information structures that we have already studied so far. Now, if you recall we have studied uh, the information structure uh, for Markov decision processes that means for problems where, uh, where the state was perfectly known and there we studied a class of policies that we called Markov policies. Markov policies were those policies where the action was taken as a function of just the present state right. Now, one can look at the, an information structure in which the only the present state is known to a controller. So, the action therefore, has to be chosen only as a function of the present state. Now, in this case what would happen? What would happen is that a previous acting controller would take its action based on its state based on the state at its time and a later acting controller would take it the its action based on the state at that at its time right. So, as a consequence of this the information of the previous acting controller would not be available to the later acting controllers although the previous acting controllers action would influence the state at a future time which is the information of the later acting controller. Right. So, the information of the later acting controller the information of the later acting controller would depend on the policy of the earlier acting controllers, but it would not uh, have access to the information that the earlier controllers had when uh, when it was when its own action was being ch chosen. Now, this is this is essentially the same thing that we have seen in a in in Witzenhausen's problem that the that is an that the that a previous controller affects the action of a late affects the information of the of the of a later acting controller, but the later acting controller does not have access to the information of the previous acting controller. Now, uh, so as a result of this there is in fact even even in a in an MDP if we restrict ourselves to Markov policies there is in fact a dual effect there too ok. But the dual effect has no bearing on the hardness of solving the problem. The problem continue uh, can be solved quite easily in spite of the fact that there is a dual effect that is because the cost is a function of the state the dynamics is a function of the state and we already know the state. It, this is it is this structure that is being exploited in solving the problem despite the fact that there is a dual effect. Now, to concretely see why there is a dual effect in, in these sort of problems let us actually look at uh, let us look at our 
let us look at one more variation of, of the Wittsenhausen problem. So, this in this variation we will assume as I said uh, as I was just discussing we will assume a Markovian information structure. So, this is variant 4, this is variant 4 uh, with Markovian information structure. And our goal is to check if there is a dual effect in this in the with this information structure. So, what do I mean by Markovian information structure? I will as I will say that u1 is a function of the initial state. So, u1 is sigma of x0 belongs to sigma of x0. So, this is the same as what we had uh, in the Wittsenhausen problem as well, but the different difference will be in, in u2. u2 is going to be a function of of the state that it is uh, at the next time step. So, u2 is a function of x1. Remember earlier u2 was a function of x1 plus the noise. So, now the state uh, is x1 and uh, that is observed perfectly. So, this is uh, this is essentially uh, by, by choosing u1 and u2 in this manner, we are effectively choosing a Markov policy right, for this problem. So, now the claim is my claim is that there is a dual effect here. So, there my claim is that there is a dual effect in this problem. So, how do I uh, establish that there is a dual effect in this problem? So, let us uh, first write this out in a slightly different way. So, you remember u1 is sigma of x0 and u2 is in sigma of x1, but x1 is nothing but x0 plus u1, right. Now, uh, now let us uh, let us suppose we let us take to what we need to show that there is a dual effect in this problem. What we need to do is show that the choice of the policy, so uh, choice of different policies within this class, within the class uh, of uh, sigma of x0, choice of two different policies within this, uh, within this class can result in two different uh, pieces of information for, for the second controller. So, uh, like we did earlier, let us suppose, uh, let us first suppose that uh, we have, suppose let us take one policy gamma, suppose u1 is equal to gamma 1 of x0 and we will take it say for example, let gamma 1 be such that. x plus gamma 1 of x is invertible. So, to show the dual effect it is always useful to look at extreme cases like this. So, one in the in the one extreme case it is uh, we are checking if x plus uh, gamma 1 of x we are considering gamma 1 such that x plus gamma 1 of x is an invertible function. So, this function that ever which maps x to x plus gamma 1 of x is invertible. Now, in this case when let us look at what u2 knows. u2 sees x0 uh, plus u1 right. So, and since so in other words he sees u2 sees x0 plus gamma 1 of x0, but gamma 1 is chosen such that x0 uh, x plus gamma gamma 1 of x is invertible which means from this information here u2 should be able to uh, equivalently know x0 itself right. So, this is there from here therefore, u2 knows x0. So, u2 therefore, belongs to sigma of x0. Now, consequently, uh, so, so, the, uh, so e this is effectively the same as u2 knowing the initial state that was known to controller 1. 
So, when so that means when gamma 1 is chosen such that x plus gamma 1 of x is invertible then u 2 has the information of x 0 in that case. Okay. Now, let us look at another uh, another case in which suppose uh, we look at now another extreme. Suppose gamma 1 of x gamma 1 is such that gamma 1 of x is say a constant minus x some constant c where c is a constant. So, gamma 1 of x is now some constant minus x it is just some affine function like this. Now, what happens here? Now, in this case u 2 again is belongs to sigma of x 0 plus gamma 1 of x x 0 and that then is implies that u 2 belong. So, if I substitute gamma 1 of x as c minus x uh, here I get that u 2 belongs to sigma of c where c is a constant which means then that u 2 has no information which means u 2 has no information has no information about x 0 since u 2 only knows the constant and constant is uh, uh, com, uh, knowing that constant is uh, is essentially implying knowing no information about uh, about uh, what is happening during the problem right. So, this so, so as a result of this if if based on the choice of gamma 1 the information of u 2 is changing. So, if gamma 1 is ch chosen such that x plus gamma 1 of x is invertible then u 2 has access to uh, has access to the initial state which is x 0. If, x, if gamma 1 of x is chosen as a constant minus x he has no knowledge of the initial state the, uh, the initial state is lost for him right. So, as a result there is a dual effect. Now, you can see here this this particular this particular manifestation of the dual effect has nothing to do with uh, the the cost function of the Wittsenhausen problem and has is not anything very specific to the kind of example that we have considered. Of course, we have made certain uses of the example here, but this dual effect can manifest itself even in in a Markov in an MDP or a stochastic control problem with perfect state information. Right. So, so even as I said at the start of the lecture such problems can also man, uh, can also exhibit a dual effect right. But the issue at hand is not not only that whether there is a dual effect of course there is a dual effect but the, the question is does the dual effect matter. Well in this case it so turns out that the dual effect does not matter. Why is that? Well the reason uh, the reason for that is uh, for instance here uh, you could you could do the following for example because the second control because the second controller knows x1 and remember the goal of the second controller is to estimate x1 from its information since it knows x1 it will it will estimate x1 directly and the first controller's uh, goal in, in the uh, remember this was our uh, this here was our cost function let me go back to the cost function that we had written out this was our cost function for the uh, for the problem. So, you had k square u 1 square plus x 1 minus u 2 square. Now, if u 2 has the knowledge of x 1 then x 1 minus u 2 can be made 0 if and u 1 then can be chosen to be uh, to be 0 itself right. So, as a consequence the entire cost can be made 0. So, I will just write this out. So, the our cost was we wanted to minimize over gamma 1 gamma 2 the expectation of k square u 1 square plus x 1 minus u 2 the whole square. But then remember u 2 is gamma 2 of it of x 1. So, u 2 can be taken so we can take gamma 2 to be gamma 2 of uh, x 1 to be equal to x 1 itself and gamma 1 of x 0. So, this is u 2 
and u1 equal to gamma 1 of x0 can be taken to be identically equal to 0. In this case we get cost equal to 0 and the above controllers are optimal. So, what do we learn from this? We learn that although there is a dual effect, the dual effect has no bearing on the hardness of, of solving the problem. Right? So, the, uh, there is a dual effect, but there is no uh, it has no influence on how, how difficult it is to solve the problem because we already know the state and once we know the state we can use that uh, we can use that information to, uh, to find the optimal policy. And in this case the optimal policy is rather trivial. The same th the same situation manifests itself when we are doing stochastic control problems with perfect information because there uh, there also the uh, there uh, the again the cost is a function of the state the dynamics are given by the state uh, or the or the transition probability matrix uh, the and we have perfect information of the state so we make use of all of this to compute the optimal policy uh, using the, the bellman's dynamic programming equation right so this is this is uh, this is our uh, the the lesson uh, that we have so far as the dual effect is concerned so so far so now let's let's go back to the witzenhausen problem i have been telling you so far that the witzenhausen problem uh, is is a hard problem uh, and it, that it is a counter example to a claim to the belief of the time that uh, linear controllers are optimal in any lqg problem and it gives a counter example by showing that if the information structure is not classical then the, uh, the then linear controllers are not optimal anymore. Now what we have not yet discussed is what uh, is how did Witzenhausen actually show this. So uh, what I will do uh, what I will do now is is uh, is briefly uh, give you uh, give you a brief outline of Witzenhausen's argument. Uh, for showing that the, uh, that uh, that linear uh, that uh, linear controllers are not actually optimal. Okay, so let's let's go back to the Witzenhausen problem. The original problem is the following: you have x zero, then as initial state, x one is equal to x zero plus u one. Remember x2 is equal to x1 minus u2, your observations are y0 equal to x0, y1 equal to x1 plus v uh, and u1 was is gamma1 of y0 and u2 is gamma2 of y1 and uh, the cost is we want to do what we want to do is minimize gamma over gamma 1 and gamma 2 the expectation of k square u 1 square plus plus x 2 x 2 square right where uh, x 0 and v are independent and in particular we of course we will later take them to be gaussian but for the moment it is enough that they are independent. So, what we will do is we will do a reformulation of this problem. So, let us do a, a reformulation. So, instead of gamma 1 what I will write uh, I will write this other notation f f of f x is equal to x plus gamma 1 of x right. So, and um, uh, g of x will simply denote gamma 2 gamma 2 of x. Okay. and x0 will be simply will be denoted by x. So, then the, re, the problem re gets reformulated in the following way. So, I can write a cost as a function of f and g now j of f comma g is the expectation then of k square remember u1 then u1 is is actually equal to uh, uh, so u u1 was gamma 1 of x so in, if i want to write now u u1 in terms of uh, uh, u1 in terms of uh, 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 u1 was gamma 1 of x0 if i want to write u1 in terms of gamma 1 uh, in terms of f then i i would get k square into 
k square times x minus f of x the whole square plus f x minus g of f of x plus v the whole square. This is my cost as a function of um, as a function uh, of f and g. Now, uh, uh, we can uh, now let us let us take, uh, take a note of uh, a few a few things here. So, the notice that the optimal g here what is the optimal g? Well, the optimal g is g star g star of let us say t equal to expectation of f of x given f of x plus v. This is something we have seen multiple times before that the, op the second the optimal choice for the second controller is to simply estimate the state given the information and I, all of that has. So, even with this reformulation that continues to be the case that is because in the reformulated part g appears only here in this portion and so what all that g is doing is minimizing this error given uh, knowing the f. So, it is it is minimizing therefore, the uh, conditional it is it is finding the conditional expectation of f given given f x plus v right. So, uh, so in fact, I should write this as this equals t right this is this is g g star t. Now, remember here here g star would depend on the function f uh, this is also a point that we have made before that g star for if I want to evaluate g star t for even a single value of t I need to know for that the entire function f and the reason for this that is because this here uh, the conditional expectation is simply uh, the this times the pro, uh, the conditional probability density of 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 f x given f x plus v. Now, and the conditional probability uh, the integral with respect to this and the condition and this conditional probability density if I want to evaluate this density I need to integrate out I need to I need to write this as basically the joint density of of uh, of this divided by the integral of the joint density. And if I want to integrate this uh, when I integrate this out the entire function f matters right because uh, the uh, this integral is with respect to the first variable the entire function f matters not just the value of the function at any one particular point. So, so therefore, g star of t is actually you can write this rather as uh, remember g star of t is actually g star sub f of t. This is uh, to make it clear that it depends on the, the optimal g star depends on f. Okay. Now, let us now let us uh, uh, now what we will do is we will uh, uh, we will dig a little deeper into this and see what kind of structure can we find in this problem. So, in the first case so suppose suppose first suppose I take uh, I fix uh, sub, okay, so now we will assume that uh, we will assume that x and v are both Gaussian. So, suppose x comma v are Gaussian all right. Now, now let us suppose suppose f was is linear ok. Suppose x and v are Gaussian and suppose f is linear. Now, if f is linear then which means f is say something of the form uh, lambda times t right. So, suppose uh, so f of x is lambda times x ok. So, so uh, are Gaussian and I am 
So, suppose x and v are Gaussian and I am going to take these to be 0 mean, 0 mean. All right. So, in that case uh, it is uh, and suppose f is now linear. So, f is suppose some lambda times x. Uh, if f is lambda times x then uh, then what uh, let us see what happens to all these other variables. So, f is lambda times x. So, in this in my objective here I get a lambda times x here. This is now a lambda times x this here. The information that the second controller has that information that g has is lambda x plus lambda times x plus v. Now, if f is lambda times x and x itself is Gaussian, then f x since x is Gaussian is Gaussian lambda x is Gaussian. And remember v was also a, a Gaussian and independent uh, independent of x then consequently lambda uh, f x plus v that means f x plus v which is lambda x plus v is also Gaussian. So, if, if x is Gaussian lambda x is Gaussian and f x plus v which is lambda x plus v is also Gaussian. So, now let us go back to what what uh, lo, lo go back to this part here we have fixed f to be lambda times x and we want to find the optimal g and optimal g remember is simply the conditional expectation of f x given f x plus v. But then notice what we have here we are now estimating f x which is lambda x given lambda x plus v which is which is also Gaussian. So, so g star g star f of t is the conditional expectation of lambda x given lambda x plus v equals t. So, because x and v are are independent and Gaussians now this is this now comes down to expect condition finding the expectation of of uh, of a Gaussian subject to another Gaussian. Uh, where where the two are jointly Gaussian right conditioned on another Gaussian where the two are jointly Gaussian. So, consequently this therefore is uh, the we, uh, what the mean square estimation theory tells us that essentially because lambda x and lambda x plus v are jointly Gaussian this has to be a linear function of the information. So, it has to be some function some linear function of the information that means it has to be some mu times t. So, since this is true since lambda x comma lambda x plus v are jointly Gaussian. So, therefore, the uh, the what what have we therefore what do we conclude from this we conclude that if f is linear right. So, if if f is linear so, we, we got to this supposing f is linear right. So, if f is linear then the optimal choice for g is also linear ok. So, the op, if f is linear we get we got to this stage where we computed what the uh, g star f is and we found that g star f is also linear it is equal to some mu times t. optimal g is also linear. Now, this does not mean that f has to be linear that is not what is being claimed here. It just says that if f if the first stage controller was chosen as linear then the second stage controller has to also be linear. The optimal second stage controller choice in response to the first stage controller being linear is also a linear controller that is all that is being claimed here ok. 
So, this is this is interesting because it tells us that there is somewhere here there is there is a sort of a linear solution uh, nearby it seems to suggest that there is a linear solution nearby. So, we will uh, delve a little deeper into this in the next lecture.